Switzerland is famous the world over for, yes, the first things that spring to mind are usually chocolate, mountains and watches in virtually any order. But Switzerland, perhaps surprisingly, is particularly famous also for graphic design and most especially fonts. Now, fonts, you could argue, are something like the Cinderella of design features. They do an awful lot of work and they are constantly busy around us, but we really rarely notice them. And in some contexts, it is almost the case that the sign of a really good font is that we don't notice it. Or if we do, then more often than not, because it supports what it is meant to be doing so well, almost in retrospect, we realise, oh, this font really conveys this information beautifully without intruding on it. And this is not just the case on the page, by far. Every road sign, every product brand, every public transport system, every airport, every museum, every website, everything everywhere that uses words by definition and necessity requires a font. And when it comes to fonts, the Swiss punch way above their weight, having created a culture of font design that has not only become immensely impactful, it even lent Switzerland's Latin name to possibly the most famous font of them all, Helvetica. Helvetica, which in all but this particular name and therefore the license fee that goes with it, includes any Arial font in the family because Arial is in effect a direct copy of it, was designed by two Swiss designers, Max Miedinger and Eduard Hoffmann, in 1957. And they were directly influenced by the godfather, in inverted commas, of contemporary fonts, Adrian Fruttiger. If you have ever been to London, driven or been driven on a Swiss motorway, used the Dutch railways or gone almost anywhere in the world or read any contemporary book, you will have had the benefit of his work because his fonts are everywhere. Universe, Avenir and Fruttiger are the most recognisable font names, but beyond those and the numerous others he himself designed, his eye and his hand reach as far into others he simply inspired, with Helvetica Ariel being just the tip of a very large iceberg. Adrian Fruttiger was born in early 1928 in the region of Bern in Switzerland and became a product, in inverted commas if you like the expression, of Switzerland's thorough apprentice system which trained him as a compositor at a printing house before he went to study at what was then known as the Kunstgewerbeschule Zürich, the Arts and Crafts School, and is now called the Zurich University of the Arts. And he did so with a focus on calligraphy. Now, although we justifiably think of Frutiger as Swiss, it is, after all, where he was from, where he trained, and where he returned to spend the latter years of his life. He, as is true for so many things, in a country as small and as surrounded by giants of European culture as Switzerland, was in no small measure influenced and his work therefore shaped also by France and Germany. Because following his studies he took a job in Paris, where he was to spend most of his working life and where he developed his trademark fonts, of which Universe was the breakthrough design that established his reputation. Tasked by his employer Charles Beignot with creating an integrated font family that could rival the Futura typeface, which had been released back in 1927, designed by Paul Renner at the Bauer Type Foundry in Frankfurt, he, Fruttiger, found inspiration for his universe font, particularly in the Accidents Grotesque font, which in turn had been created in Berlin at the end of the 19th century. And so it is fair to recognise that any font design and any font design culture is of course influenced and nourished by another, by those surrounding it. Following an extremely successful and highly recognised career, Fruttiger moved back to Switzerland, this time settling in Bremgarten, not far from Zurich, 
where he died on the 10th of September 2015, aged 87. He is credited with around 30 typefaces and he received over a dozen awards spanning six decades. Among the organisations and corporations who use his fonts are Deutsche Bank, the Paris Metro, CNN, the Swiss government, the NHS in the UK, as well as the BBC, and his legacy as an influence and inspiration reaches way further. If you have ever done anything with text, read, written, typed, designed, you will be as good as certain to have used the work of Adrian Fruttiger. And there is somebody else we want to mention here, because of course this MOOC is not only about typography and text, but also about layout and graphic design generally. And one particularly interesting and again influential designer who has had a great impact on visual communication is the German graphic designer and typographer Otto Eicher. He was born in Ulm, Germany in 1922 and so is of the same generation as Frutiger and he also worked in typography designing the stylish Rotis font which was released in 1988 for Bulltaub Kitchens. But he is probably best known and respected for his branding and logo designs and very particularly for his work on the Munich Olympics in 1972. Here he was appointed chief designer and developed a series of distinctive pictograms to represent the various disciplines. These were iconic both in the sense of standing out for their instant recognisability and also in the sense that we use today that they look like the kinds of icons we now use to denote apps on computers or smartphones. Incidentally, the typeface he chose for the games was Frutiger's universe. Rotis, the name he gave his font, is the name of the place where he lived and worked and also really rather tragically died. While mowing a lawn by the roadside he was hit by a motorbike and succumbed to his injuries on the 1st of September 1991, aged 69. Both Adrian Frutiger and Otto Eicher today are justly considered giants of typography and graphic design because of both of them it can be said that they helped define the look and feel of the 20th century.